Hey y'all, Joe here, Southern Coastal Cooking. I've got a huge video coming at y'all today. It's gonna be brought to you by Fogo Charcoal and Jonesy Q Barbecue. I tell you what, I'm having a real pro. I'm talking about this guy who has the big rigs that go to Memphis in May and win the big money. Jeff Jones with Jonesy Q Barbecue is coming over here, coming to my house, into my cooker, my kitchen. And he's going to show us how to do some competition style barbecue, or mainly at the house, but just give us some of his secrets. He's got his own rubs, his sauces, everything, man. He's going to do it big. Uh, I've tried his stuff before. It's good stuff, but we're going to try it again. He's got some new formulated rubs, and he's coming over. My buddy Abe's coming over. Uh, the Poultry Master's brother might even be here. It's going to be big, so y'all watch out. Right now, I'm going to put some of this super premium Fogo in the Cayman. We're going to get it started up, y'all, and it's going to be a good time. I like, to, you know, I like to get the charcoal bakes going in the Cayman. Pour some of this super premium in here. Let's get some good bakes for this afternoon's cook. And I'll kind of stack this up and get that lit. All right, we got Abe here. Um, he's going to show us how to trim up some spare ribs. Y'all know I've only done like one spare rib video. So Abe's won a little competition with some spare ribs and stuff like that. And Jones and Q, and Jeff's on the way. Yep. So uh, Abe's going to have the ribs trimmed up when from, uh, Jeff gets here to season them. So Abe, take it away. Show us what we're doing. I just want you to know that Jeff called me right before I got here. He said, uh, I'm gonna find the hardest spare ribs for you to ever trim in your <laughs> life. He said, uh, he said, I hope you're ready. And I was like, okay. We just yanked this off the pig right before you got here. So what we're gonna do, to, to if, if you've got a big slab like this, which has got a lot of good tips on it too, you're gonna take these bones. And the easiest thing to do is turn it over. And if you look, right, we're so gonna- Let me zoom you in here Zoom me in, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna line the bones up with the bottom of the cutting board. Okay. You see how that's lined up? Uh -huh. Now, we need to find, which I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this part so it's probably a little bit easier to see. We'll go ahead and get this little piece off of here. Like that little skirt, same yeah, down little skirt. Just, I wanna get it out the way. And I'll probably do some more trimming on it, but this is just for right now. To get that out the way. Is somebody coming in? No. Okay. So, here we go. Now we're gonna find the tallest bone out of the spare ribs, which I can kind of find it. We'll get a different angle over here. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna find the tallest bone out of these. So we got a lot on this particular spare rib, there's a lot of hard stuff on there and we're gonna to wanna to try to make a line that's gonna be straight. So the, the easiest thing to do is kind of cut a line that's gonna be straight with this bottom line. Now, <laughs> these bad boys have got an end right there that is something tough. So I'm probably gonna end up wasting that bottom bone, but I'm gonna go ahead and give myself the line to go through. Now so, I all this, excuse me, interrupting, all this stuff right here, that is good. edible, it's good meat, but for yeah. what we're doing, this is just, we wanna make it look pretty. A absolutely, mm -hmm. this is, matter of fact, you can cook this whole thing whole and cut this off afterwards. Okay. okay. I mean, it's a, uh, but if you're doing like some type of comp, you know, which would not have all the curved ribs and this gigantic thing right here, okay. uh, it, it'd be a little easier, but we, we'll still cook this today. Okay. I'll probably chop it up and make some rib tips. It's honestly great in an air fryer. No, uh, talk about, you see the curved ribs, so, so. So you see how these, okay. like when you're doing comp ribs, you see these right here, yeah, okay. how they're kind of all straight bones. Okay, okay. Comp ribs, you look for that. Yeah. But see how this is going all out here and all out here, and yeah, this is going all okay. over here. You got this big, gigantic, so, freaking almost, yeah. uh, you know, connected bone right there, okay. which is gonna make it a little tough to cut through. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna get all the way, you know, through there. Okay. And I'm gonna try to, you know. Oh, I got you. There we go, hammer that. There you go. I'm gonna go a little higher. Great. And all the way through, all the way through. That was gonna be the top. So now, look, you've got, honestly, a great set of rib tips right here. Now, before I go in and I start trimming all this up, I'm gonna show you, do you see all these 
little bones in there. All oh, this mm. is great meat. Now, trim off some of the fat, get some of the silver skin, but this is good food right here. Okay. And there's a lot of barbecue joints that just so serve tips. this. Yeah, I've had tips. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I love rib tips. Sometimes I'll cut them in between there yeah. and I'll, I'll, I'll either grill them. Sometimes yeah. I even throw them in the air fryer. But this okay. right here is a great Big set thing. to use. Okay. Yeah, right. I mean, that's a great one to use. Okay. So now you're going to want to clean it up. I mean, you don't want all this. You want it as even as possible when when you're going into comp. So you got all this kind of fat towards the end. Yeah. You don't want that. Now the other thing is, see, there's this big hunk of, you know, you want the ten best bones. So we're going to look on the other side too. There's some curled up right there. Yeah, there's curled up. So we don't want that. So for for a comp, which that's kind of curved, we're yeah. going to, which I need to straighten that up a little bit. So, and then I'm going to look over and I'm going to count about 10 bones in. One, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This last bone, which was honestly connected to that big gigantic piece. I almost want to take it right there. Ooh. Yeah. I know you lose a lot, but all this can be cooked. Okay. But you're looking, when you're doing a comp, mm -hmm. you really want the prettiest pieces. Now, I mean, I'll, I'll take off the membrane, but I haven't been there yet. Right now, I'm wanting to take off little pieces of fat. See, all this stuff, that's not going to do anything but burn, which doesn't look good to the judges. Okay. So, I'm going to plop it over here. See this right here? Yeah. That always comes out black. And your season is not going to go through that as much. So, I'm going to... Ah, this. okay. And your smoke and all that. Okay, that that's yeah. right. So, we want to take some of that off of there. See, I didn't take any meat off, but I'm getting a lot of that fat off. Yeah. Need a good sharp knife to do it. Right. There we go. And you can leave some of it on there because some of it's going to render. And uh, like some of the real, you know, guys at Memphis and May, which is not me, they'll take some of this stuff off in the middle. And Jeff would do that. So he, yeah, he, Jeff so Jones does that. I, matter of fact, I never did that until I saw him do that. And he's got these surgical knives where he goes in there and yeah, just that scalpels. Guy, or yeah, scalpels and, and all that stuff. And he comes out. And then, you know, the, the rest of it is you just want to make sure you square everything up. So you want to make okay. sure that you've got this. It's all square. All right. yeah. Now we're back to recording. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure I get just you know any hanging pieces off of there. Sure. Make sure that we got most of the fat off of there. I've got this one kind of big piece right there. I'm gonna here. All right. Okay, and we're almost done with this. The main thing is you want it to cook even. So like mm -hmm. over here, like see how like you got this kind of big piece of meat kind of sitting up there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off. You want to make it is symmetrical as possible. We need to remove that fat right there. Eh, you know, just parts of it. It's okay. not that you get all of it, yeah. just some of it, because those are the parts that are most likely to burn, and mm -hmm. then you don't have a pretty part. Which, in a competition, you're, you're serving most of the inner ribs anyway, and, right. and, and, and these aren't really comp ribs, but we're doing the best we can with them. See how symmetrical this is right, right now? Now we got this. So this is right. actually, I guess you would say, this is the St. Louis style. This is St. This is. St. Louis style on steroids sure. okay. because we've, we've, we've cut off a lot of pieces that you could keep. Right. So this would be like, if we were trying to make this part as comp as possible, yeah. we've done that. And you can see how much prettier yeah. that looks in the gigantic, and, and we wasted a lot, but right. I'm gonna, we're gonna cook this okay. uh, today. And all I gotta do now is take off the membrane in the back and, and we're good to go. But that is a, you know, I mean, that's as good looking as you're gonna get this little set of ribs. And uh -huh. uh, you could, Go ahead and take off little parts of this this right here, but I'm trying to keep it as even. Okay. So I'm, I'm not going to take that part off, and I think we've got a good looking little set right. of spare ribs. Thanks, Ed. All right, we got Jeff Jones here, the professional I was telling you about earlier. He's got uh, his own barbecue products that he's formulated. He's got a championship barbecue team. And I mean, this guy is the people who, you know, I watch on YouTube <laughs> to learn from and, and well, he didn't have a YouTube channel, but I, you know, I watch his, uh, his classes and stuff like that and he teaches, but uh, he's got some great products. And what he's going to do today is he's going to show us a little bit about how he trims his ribs for competition, talk to us about his different rubs, sauces, and things like that. So um, we're really gracious to have him here. Appreciate you for coming by, Jeff. No worries. No worries. Hey, he's Thank placing you so much. the top 10 in the world, just so y'all know. There we go. He's placing okay. top 10 in the world. Well, we've got, got a cool t shirt. Yeah, we've got some uh, <laughs> regular just baby back, going back ribs here. 
that uh, we're going to kind of trim up, get a little bit of this extra skin off, just make it a little bit easier to eat, uh, get some of this gristle off. Um, first thing we kind of want to do is, you know, just kind of trim a little bit of the backside here, uh, get a little bit of this excess meat off. Not wanting to trim it too much, but as far as getting a little bit of this bad, bad meat off, cut this last bone off, kind of trim it out a little bit. You know, Jeff, when you say bad meat, you're talking about for competition wise. And this, yeah, probably home cooks, you yeah. just cut the whole thing almost. Yeah, a lot of the times the end of this stuff's real gristly. Mm -hmm. You got the bad knuckle right here, and it, you can kind of tell how the way they trim these off the loin. It's uh, just the way the rib cage is shaped, and they try to run them square through a saw, but you actually get that cut. Um, when we cook in a competition, especially you know MBN cooking a loin back rib, we want to kind of take a saw. And we'll actually come right through here. Oh, wow. So okay. our line would kind of try to straighten this rib right through here. Is there anything when you go to pick out a rib, like if you're at the store or something like that, I guess, that, that you look for the characteristics? You know, you, you really want to have a nice little loin back in here. This is what's making this loin back rib. Uh, it's the upper part of the rib cage, get a little bit more loin on it. Um, and I usually call this the bacon strip. I mean, this is like the candy when you cook. Um, a lot of times we present to the judges, we'll actually reach in here and grab this bacon loin strip, pull it out and give it to them. Um, but the, you know, the way you want to get your seasonings in and your marinades in, it's you got to get a lot of the skin off here. And that's kind of what we're going to do right now is just kind of take our knife, work, get a lot of that membrane right here out. A lot of the ribs that we get from competitions, whether you're premium out of pork, Compart, Smithfield, a lot of the comp cuts, um, a lot of this process is already done for you. Okay. Um, Heritage Farms, a lot of the great teams uh, that are cooking now, we don't have to put as much work into our ribs on the trimming aspect of it just because the the manufacturers are doing it for us. Right, and these came straight from Kroger, you know, I mean, these are yeah. just good. And, you know, I trim this part of it off. It's a, it's a nice piece of meat. Um, but it's holding behind a lot of fat here that as I expose this, you'd be able to tell. And when you have a, a comp, you're gonna give a judge a nice piece of rib, which you don't want them doing is biting into a bunch of fat. So what we're trying to do is expose this little cap down to get that more trimmed up for the rest of the uniform of the rib. We'll come right here, knock this piece off, Basically trying to trim a lot of the fat off the top part of the meat to expose that. Um, you wouldn't even seen that piece of meat earlier. So right here, you can come right in underneath that skin, cut to the left. Not hard to remove a lot of meat, just a lot of fat. And all we're doing is trying to just expose that good piece of meat. So when you're actually getting your good bite out of that, you're not having to worry about getting a big fat content as well. So typically in a competition, how many ribs does each judge get to try? Is it just one, one of your ribs, one bone? Or? Um, you want to try to feed a judge. Um, there's six judges in a blind, so you want to make sure that each judge has um, a bite. Uh, a lot of times what we do is we'll give a judge two bones to eat. Okay. So when we trim them in our box, once they're cooked, we'll come right over here to this right corner of this bone. We'll trim right through here. We'll come over to this side. We'll go two bones over. And we'll trim right here. So they'll have two bones, meat on each side of the bone. A lot of times the judges will take it. They'll try to pull it apart for tenor just to see if it's going to be an even break in the meat or if it's just going to pull straight off the bone. Okay. Uh, you don't want it to fall off the bone. You want it a little, little tight but not real loose. Um, and so they're actually going to have a piece that looks like this. It's going to have a little bit of that loin in there. They're going to have some good meat in the center. And... So you're talking about the loin, if you would, flip that back over for me just for a second. So you're telling me there's two muscles involved here. Yeah, it's basically the upper part of the, coming off the back part of the loin that runs up on the very okay. top part of the meat, and then it kind of comes back down to where your spare ribs are at. See, I never so that's where it's that. breaking okay. your rib, loin back up the top, your spares are down at the bottom. Um, that's why usually when you see a spare rib, this whole piece right here is not there because it's the bottom half portion of the meat and it's more squared up which is a lot easier to trim a spare rib than it is a, a loin back rib. Okay. And all we're doing is just trying to get a little bit of this off. I always tell people that when you're cooking on a rib and you're trying to cook a, a complete rib in uniform, 
you want to make sure your ribs is nice and smooth so it's, it's, it's as high over here as it is over here. It's always going to curve down a little bit more, but this is the main part of the rib that you're going to be focusing on for a judge. And like I said, if we would have trimmed it up earlier, we would have basically, you could have trimmed right this top part right here off. Sometimes you get a double knuckle here, so you've got a bone here in this top part. Yeah, I'm always worried about that. So what is that with the double knuckles? That's just kind of how that spare rib is going to start off, which is what you trim off on your spares as well. So we would try to take this and square it up as much as we can. Uh -huh. And then, like I said, run that saw right through here to give us a nice square pattern. So you would cut that. What, what, kind, what kind of equipment do you need to do that? You know, a lot of us do use band saws. Band saws. Um, okay. Or you can actually have your butcher do it. Um, a lot of the butchers that are selling competition meat, yeah. they'll actually, you can now pay, we get rid of all the square extra, knuckles. Now. Square it up, comes right out of the package. Um, a lot of the newer, um, not newer, but different breed of hogs, the Durox, a lot of the companies that are making these uh, these beautiful pigs now, when they, they'll trim them up for us and send to us. So, I mean, okay. I very rarely have to trim too much off of it, anything. Uh, I think our last comp I didn't trim, but a little bit of a little bit of bone off. I mean, they're just a little bit more square. And it, a lot of it depends on the processor and how fast they're trying to do. If they're trying to just run it through, square them up to get them in competition cuts, they try to do a little bit more narrow of a cut. So this okay. would be the probably the aspect of it you want to use. Okay. So we've got these. We're going to take a little bit more off here, and then we're going to get into the season, season aspect of it. Is there a reason, talking about the season, to let things uh, sit overnight or anything? How, how long is it before you put them on the cooker? I mean, it's kind of a it's kind of a preference. Um, I season mine up the night before. That way they can go ahead and marinate in. Okay. Uh, is that really doing anything? I know guys that season them the morning before, throw them on the grill. Um, I don't think it's giving anybody more of an advantage. It just depends on how much earlier you want to start your process. Okay. Um, I try to get all my men, meat trimmed up, seasoned up, and packed in the cooler. So the next morning, all we're doing is pulling out. Uh, we'll paper tie them, dry off, tap them off with a loop, you know, a few extra sprinkles of rub, and throw them right on the grill. Okay. All right, so we trimmed up now. This is all the trimming that we need to do? Yeah, that's about what we're going to do for today's. Right, and you know, you took the uh, the membrane, I take it off the yeah, back. Yeah, membrane came done. off the, the front. Uh, that's always a, a really good thing to do. I'm just, I'm a sucker for having some of this extra fat on here, these <laughs> tendons. Um, it's one of the things you bite into a good rib, you don't want a, a membrane holding you up. I mean, these are fatty. A lot of this fat's going to cook off. Um, cooking at these temperatures and smoking with some good hardwood will kind of eliminate a lot of this. Um, so in a competition, do you think the cooking process or the preparation process is more where the contest is won? You know, you can win or lose it in a couple different ways. If you don't trim your meat up right, and it's, uh, you know, a lot of times I tell people when you set your meat on the grill, if you lay your meat crooked like this, mm -hmm. your rib's going to cook crooked. Okay. Um, I always tell people, pay attention when you line your meat up, put it on the grill, get it nice and square. So let it cook and start setting up that way. Okay. Um, you know, you can over season your meat, you can under season your meat. Uh, the cooking process is key. I think if you get a good good control smoke on it, get to the temperature you want. Uh, different people variation on their temperature. Um, smoking it and cooking it to, you know, 198 to 204. I think it's a lot of preference. I think a lot of the meat now with the Duroc brand, it's more of a, a marble type, kind of like your Wagyu. Uh, gives you a little bit more marbling, a little more flavor. So that's kind of one of the, the keys in cooking. Uh, Duroc's going to cook a little bit faster. I think on my old hickory, I can cook a four hour competition rib, and that's what a lot of us are doing. Uh, okay. That CTO with a convection fan, based to a, a water cooker that's going to be a little bit slower, right. keeping like a little the, more moisture. Like the, uh, what is it, the Myra My, uh, Mix? Mix uh, water cooker uh, style? Yeah, yeah. and like backwoods. All right, okay. Um, cool. So, so, yeah, we'll get to the seasoning here next. Awesome. Okay, so Jeff's going to explain to us some of his rubs that he's developed. Uh, tell us a little bit about the details about, you know, the flavor profiles and stuff like that before we season our ribs. All right, we're going to start off today. Uh, we're going to season up some loinbacks and some spare ribs. Uh, we're going to kind of go through uh, how we do a Jonesy Q with our seasonings. Um, we start off with our salt, pepper, garlic. Uh, which we took our love rub, we added a little jalapeno powder. It, does a, it has a little jalapeno taste, not a jalapeno burn on the back end. We added a little bit of butter powder to it, and we upped our garlic intake. So we call that ecstasy. It's our kind of our base layer that we use um, on all of our meats, whether we're cooking chicken, pork, or beef. Uh, the second rub we're going to go on is our money honey, which we took our 
booty rub, which is our kind of a little bit of our smoked paprika, things like that. It's kind of our standard pork rub. We added honey, pecan, and chipotle to it. The beauty about the pecan is we went with a little bit of alternative pecan that doesn't actually have real pecan in it, so that if you're eating at home, you have a food allergy, you're okay with this. Uh, third layer we go on is our bone rub, which is standard for our pork ribs, and we're gonna finish it off with a little bit of our pig pal. Uh, that gives a little bit of coloring to it, and it's got a little hint of cherry, so it's going to be a really good uh, formulation for our ribs. Sounds good. All right, I'm going to uh, start uh, applying some of these rubs okay. because I've been using Joe's Q for a while, and I've loved every minute of it. I'm probably one of his biggest fans. Yeah. Can you tell by yeah. Now, what sure. you got uh, there, Abe, that's XTC. This is the XTC. Now, it used to be the Love Rub, okay? What but what he's done, this, the Love Rub is not on the market yet, okay? Well, no, XTC. The, the X, I'm sorry, the XTC is not on the market yet. So uh, the Love Rub was basically your salt, pepper, garlic, your, your base all rub. All-purpose rub, okay, all you purpose. know, that, that was really delicious. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. one thing to know about the XTC rub is it does not have any... Uh, MSG. MSG in it. So people that are worried about MSG, there's no MSG in this rub. And I can tell you from experience, because he's given me some, that it is amazing. You can put it on popcorn, you can put it on asparagus, the flavor stays through. I've used other people's, uh, you know, uh, all-purpose rubs that okay. they try to add a butter flavoring to, but by the time you finish cooking your food, it's not there. Okay. You know, this sticks with the food, and it's literally probably I, I, I want to own like a gigantic barrel of it. It's one of my favorite seasons. So this is the first thing within competition. That, that, that goes on the ribs, and, okay. and, and I mean it, it's delicious. So, but but you, we're going to do a little light coat on yes. on the outside, so you can kind of look at it, and see what we're doing here. And you also you'll notice we've got some loin back ribs, of course, that we did, and then those spare ribs that we did earlier. That's right. He he did the uh, baby backs, and he's a much better trimmer, and he probably would. Trim my spare ribs different, but I did the best that I know how. So right now, I did that because we're not giving it a lot of time to rest, and I didn't put mustard on it. No, no, see, he didn't put the mustard, but he's going with the duck fat. Show us that duck fat bottle there. Yeah, what is here's that? a duck fat bottle. Okay, that's yeah, the duck fat spray. So I'm going to go ahead and spray it down a little bit, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm going to pat this in. You don't rub it in because you want to close the pores. So I'm going to pat. Yeah, it's funny, you know, rub, they call it rubs, but you don't rub on a rub, you, you want a pat. <laughs> That's right, you want a pat, this is the mm -hmm. truth. Now, I mean, of course we had time, we would have put this on there, let it sweat, and started doing everything else. Now, the next thing that we're going to do, and this is a rub. Yeah. I'm sorry. Money honey right there. Money this is honey. the money honey. Now, it's in a bird rub bo uh, bottle, but this is a brand new rub, also not on the market. Okay. And uh, it is delicious. We're also going to season our chicken with this. And this is going to be the second layer that we go on. So, so what's the flavor, uh, flavor profile on the money honey? Is it honey powder? What, what other flavors are we looking at? Well, that's going to be... Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a honey uh, honey powder with, uh, like I said, it's an alternative pecan. Uh, we wanted to add something that had a little bit of a nut taste to it. It okay. uh, didn't bother people as far as their food allergies. And then we went with kind of a standard Chipotle, which you have different variations of Chipotle. You can get really hot with it or you can stay on the mild end. And we try to go with a little bit of neutral and everything. We wanted our, our honey to be a neutral, the pecan to be neutral, and the chipotle. We didn't want to take away from the the actual rub itself, which was the booty rub. We were just trying to find a nice little balance mixture to give a little bit different of a platform for you. Okay. For those of us that haven't heard of your rubs before, the booty rub, that was your original uh, pork rub. What was it? What was it about? So um, kind of you know, we were trying to find something. A lot of the seasons we have are kind of based of a combination between your Memphis style and your uh, Texas style cooking. So we try to find a nice balance so that when you're selling a rub, you can sell it across a platform for customers and not just in a localized area. Okay. So now we're going to go with the bone rub. This is a specialty. This is your rib rub. This gives you your color. This gives you your bite. And, um, and like he's told me before, the reason you season the, the bottom parts of your ribs first, okay. you know, it, it, let me tell you, the, the, the judges taste from both sides of the mouth. And you want to make sure that both sides are seasoned so they get that bottom bite and the top bite. So we repeat the same process on the top. That's right. Okay. So now we got the bone rub on it, which is our missing. Now, the, the, the last thing, this is the super color. Uh, Pee Pal, it's got, it's got a little cherry, is that right? 
Yeah, we were trying to find something to help. Uh, you know, you, you see a lot of people uh, putting pictures up of their meat and they're always photoshopping to get that red color. So we kind of got with our food chemist and we were like, we need to find something that we wanted to add a little bit of a fruit flavor to our, our seasonings. Cherries are a nice, mild flavor that everyone likes. So we started looking at some options that we could put in to actually make your meat pop out. You know, you eat with your eyes, so we wanted to have a nice color, a nice red shimmer shine to keep you in that mahogany stage so you're not so much on the brown molasses, dark uh, looking product. Good deal. So now I'm gonna throw the, the pig pal on this, which is a beautiful color. I know the last competition I did to try to get the, the color I wanted, I'm mixing grenadine and water. <laughs> trying to get that beautiful red color. And here you go, you can get that in a rub right here. And I'm gonna show you, we, we did one rack before we started this video. I'm gonna show you the color after I finish doing the back sides of this. You know, I'm trying to get all the spots I didn't get there. While this is sitting before I turn it over, because I want it to get a little moist before I turn these ribs over. Probably but, get it with one more spray that duck sp uh, fat, I guess. I, just to, it's going to sweat here in just a second. I'll go ahead and spray it, but uh, if we were to let it sit for five minutes, it would be uh, super moist. It brings that moisture out of there, and, and all you got to do is pat it in. There you go. It, the fact that we're doing this quickly is uh, the smells only. Smells great. Yeah, it mm -hmm. does. It smells great. It looks great. But let's go ahead and look at uh, the color. Okay. I want you to see this. This is the color of the one that we did right before we started. Oh, yeah. Look how beautiful that mm -hmm. looks. Mm -hmm. And all that's done is sweat out. And I, we literally, right before we started talking about this, just did this. And we did it the same way we did these because we were in a hurry. But that is a beautiful <laughs> looking set yeah, of ribs right there. Nice, uh... So uh, I, I can't wait to see all these turns out. and. Uh, Y'all, I mean, this is going to be a, an exciting cook today. We got to get the other sides of this done. And um, I don't know that we need to film that, but. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll go ahead and flip it over and get the other sides. And, That's right. Uh, we'll get out in the cooker. All right, y'all. So I got Abe out here at the Y640. And Jeff out here, too. So, uh, sorry, the Y640. We're at the Cayman, brother. <laughs> Y640 is standing by, but we're at the Cayman, at the big boy. So we got the Cayman rolling about 225. Got some cherry wood burning. Uh, we're going to lay the ribs on there. So now, I've never put anything on the Kingman. Where, where's the best place to put the ribs on the Kingman? Does it matter? No, it doesn't. All right. I'm gonna I mean, just don't put them right by the firebox or right by the Let's go ahead stack. And you know? Start off with, with that little rack right there. Okay. You see it? You see yeah, it? that's beautiful. So I'm going to start off right here. Look, uh, are you sure I'm not, Ma I'm not seeing Malcolm Reed here holding up? No. Oh, <laughs> not when I've got Jeffrey Jones right here. He'll make Malcolm uh, Reed look bad. I was kidding. Okay. Then we got another right. little stack yeah. right here. Okay. Bunch up these. So bunch up. Explain this. You're bunch getting the bones straight, right? The bones are pushing up. Okay. Especially matters in spare ribs. I, but you can see them how they're all popping up right there. Right. And uh, I'm gonna do all the. Uh, hey, hey, hey! I, I don't mean to disrupt. Let's go the other way with them. That way they'll stay more to the same temperature zone. Are you talking about this? Yeah, one? yeah, horizontal. Okay, that's yeah. right. That's I'm right. I'm not used to cooking on the kingdom, so that's we're okay. Get that right there. Yeah. I'm gonna do this. Yeah, that way. Cooking right there. Because you, know, you get two different temperatures when you get closer to the stackers, closer to the firebox, you can get a little bit of differentiation. Well, so, I'm gonna go ahead and get this yeah, one there we there. go. I'm gonna put, oops, back here. And y'all notice he's actually putting them straight on, on the on the grate. Now, normally always cooking pans, but hey, for something as special as this, we'll go straight on the grate. I'm not worried about it. Ooh, wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, we're gonna push this bad boy up. Now, even though Jeffrey. Jones is here. Jones Q Barbecue. I did do the spare ribs. <laughs> there you go. There you go. He did trim them up. Okay. Okay, so now we got six racks of ribs on here, which I'm excited about. We got to get this thing up to the right temp. And, man, they look freaking gorgeous, man. There we I, go. I don't even know so we're going to shoot for around 250 or so and just let them get some smoke. Let's roll smoke, y'all. Let's smoke. shut it down. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. All right, y'all, so I finally get to be on camera again. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put together a uh, 
one of my little competition uh, chicken things that you know when I did that competition I had to, uh, one for the chicken like the only one I've ever done but anyway so basically I did some uh, competition style chicken thighs now I didn't cut them down the size normally when you do this you cut them down with their you know the perfect shape you know there's no you know oblong shapes they're all the same size I didn't do that but basically what I did is I took the skin I scraped the skin I put it back over the thighs and what I'm going to use is some of uh, Jones and Q's rubs here to season this. But I'm still using my same method that I used there in the comp. I've got some uh, some butter that I just lightly melted. Okay, just a couple sticks of butter. If you look down here in the little pan, we're going to take a little pan like this. And you just want to put a little bit of butter in the bottom. All right. Uh, you don't have to be too, too much. But you just want to get down there just like that. And you just want to kind of get somewhat even, okay? And th then you want to take uh, your chicken thigh. Now, I've already wrapped the thin layer of skin around the chicken thigh. And should, I'll go ahead and give y'all my secret. My secret to doing the chicken thighs, what I do is I take the skin and I scrape it, but I take a uh, a, a meat tenderizer with the, like, you know, the 74 little, little sharp little pointy things that you do like when you're doing a... Uh, a country style steak or something like that. I'm trying to look for it around here, but I don't see it anywhere. Oh well, y'all get the point. And I punch tiny holes in the skin of the chicken, and that makes it where it's good bite through skin. Okay, so I put that on there. I put my skin back on the chicken. I marinated the chicken. I used. Let me show you what I got. I used this uh, right here. I used the butcher's chipotle flavor. Uh, it's an injection, but I use it. Just as a marinade, so so going, you soaked it. You it was exactly yeah, soaked it for I would say you want to do it for at least two or three hours overnight wouldn't hurt. But basically, what we're doing is we're just just putting these in here just like this, and every everything just nice and you get everything to fit right. Now, I may not be able to fit them all in this one pan, but that's okay. We can do, uh, we just want to take the best ones. Those are good. Then we're going to come through with a new XTC rub. And this has got the garlic. This has got the, uh, the butter powder, all that good stuff, the salt, pepper. We're going to give that a base layer right there. And then we're going to come with the, uh, the money rub. And this gives a sweet aspect right there. You can go with that, y'all. And that, oh, that's going to be so nice. Put that on there. And then I want to take some of my duck fat because with chicken, you want some sort of oil on the skin right there. And by the way, you want your skins to be very dry. And up, uh, last of the duck fat. You got to get me some more. But anyway, that is my fault. Gonna, there we go. <laughs> so that's what we'll put in the cooker about 275. I'll let it go 30 minutes. Then we'll do something a little bit different. We'll cover it, but I'll catch up with y'all then. That's how we're going to do our uh, semi-comp chicken thighs, okay? Good. All right, y'all, so we got some chicken halves here that Abe's going to season up. But I did brine that same brine that I used, the butchers. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, same type thing. We're doing the XTC rub, which is the butter, salt, garlic, pepper, a little bit of jalapeno flavoring. Um, no MSG in any of these products. That's a good point. I yeah, that. and um, got that underneath there. Got it under the skin. I'm gonna pat that in and we'll turn it over. I had to get that other side on the other rub. I didn't think about that part turning, but that's all right. Eh, eh. You can tell I didn't cut these off the whole chicken. Do another little light coating because honestly, we could just put this rub on it and it'd be just fine. Yeah. But if you want a little color on there and flavor, because he's got this new rub that's not on the market, which is the Money Honey. This right here is to die for. That right there is the delicious so that looks fantastic so we got the chicken halves well we gotta do one more thing because i've got uh, okay. 
So I might as well do those at the same time. Okay. You got another pan for that? Oh, you want to put some of those in there with the thighs or what? I'm just gonna put them in this pan right okay. there. Okay. There we go. You know, I want to get your butter. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little butter on there. That butter in the bottom of this pan is that chicken. It just does something. It's just, this is wonderful. <laughs> Use my, my chicken as a paintbrush there. Mm -hmm. Get these going. They've been, you gotta reshape them after they've been in the uh, brine. Oh yeah, these must get a little bit. You can kind of see how these things are looking pretty right here. Go ahead and season one for us. I'll do that. Let, let, let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and use the XTC rub. Okay. Let's go ahead and do it on this uh, small one right here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a little bit rub on, on that side. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this new pecan rub. Okay. And I can season these pretty good because I'm going to glaze them at the end, which takes a little bit of the rub off of it. But that right there. All right. And that's how they'll be seasoned. Yep. All right. So here's what we got. We're on the Y640. I got it running at 275. Uh, that's the perfect temperature to throw some chicken on. So there goes Abe. He's throwing lollipops on there. Awesome. We've, we're running with cherry. I've mixed 100% cherry lumberjack and pecan. So cherry pecan pellets. I think that's the perfect mixture for chicken, honestly. Go ahead and just put those on. No, put the pan on there. Pan on there, Abe. Well, okay. And I've got an upper deck and we can. Worry about the other stuff. Put the other stuff. Actually, why don't you just set those on the griddle if they'll fit? Yeah, that's what I. Think. Okay. Let's put this yeah, because half chickens don't. Don't matter. Mm-hmm. I can fit them all along. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. Push the line pot pan back a little yeah. bit. There you go. There you go. There we go. All right, there we, we go. Got a full so tank, we got there, full man. tank. All right, full shut tank. it on down. Y six forty. There we roll. We've got this amazing. We're about to I mop these ribs. We need to huh? mop this thing, man. That's going to be. It's with the Jones Q mop here. Jones Q mop right here, and I've almost. Mop he does sauce. it a little different, but I didn't have everything he had. No, yet. he doesn't have a mop sauce out just yet, but he has a barbecue sauce, and this is something you can make yeah, from that. Yeah, something so, you can make, yeah. and uh, I'll let him decide if he wants to teach anybody that because he uses it during his comps. Um, are y'all ready? Yep. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Look oh, at wow. Those ribs right there. Oh, you know what? Man, that's that's gorgeous. Yeah, they get some great color on them. So I'm going to go ahead and start mopping. And for those of you who are asking, I know you will, where to get that uh, brush. I bought off of Amazon. I'll try to put a link in the description box. But from what I've seen lately, they haven't been selling it. But uh, it's, it's great. It's awesome. It's like it holds the sauce. It doesn't drip off there until you hit the meat. So anyway. Yeah, it really doesn't. I'm that's uh, like that's that. what we're doing. We're I didn't just know what to think when I saw that chain. Yeah, it was like, there. what is that? And it's like, I'm is like, that some, uh, something to use? Uh, never mind. Yeah, it's, anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, listen, I, I thought it was something to use with his wife, but uh, you know, whatever they want to do is, is up, up to them. But mm. oh my goodness, this looks delicious. Look at that. Look at that mop just going on there. Yeah, I mean, that, that glaze is delicious. You know what I may do? I may come back with a little bit of that Crawford's, the apple too, and, and hit up there. That'd be really good. So yeah, this mop is absolutely amazing. Very, very good. I forgot to put the, uh, I was going to put a little pig pal in there and I forgot. Oh, she, you want me to go get the pig pal? I might put a little more pig pal rub on it if you don't mind going. A little bit get, rub. Okay, yeah, I'll get that. Just over the top for the color. So we've hit about 150 in the chickens. So Abe's going to go ahead and sauce them. In fact, what we might want to do is take them out of the pans at this point. Yep. And, and sauce them and let them kind of start tacking up there on the griddle. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get them sauced up. Probably take them out of the pans in a minute. So what we're doing now is depanning everything. And uh, he's moving it up there. It's reached about 150 degrees. He's going to sauce it and just let that sauce set. Oh, it's going to be absolutely amazing. All right, so this sauce he's using, what is it now? We got a picking and grilling uh, barbecue sauce that we're using. Okay. And we also have uh, a little bit of Daigle's uh, pecan, okay. uh, hot pecan okay. uh, glaze. Right. And, uh, and some butter. Okay. And we are sticking this back on here and just kind of glazing all this chicken. I mean, it, to be honest, it's done. It's ready to eat, but we're going to go ahead and glaze it. Um, I, I was picking these chicken halves up to put on top and having trouble picking them up because they were just so juicy. 
and some of the juice actually flew out in my eye. And I'm like, oh my God. Now for, for once, I am not actually going to uh, glaze my uh, lollipop. lollipop okay. Because you know, sometimes I don't want them glazed. Sometimes yeah. I just want them uh, done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them on this rack. Yeah. Because I already, I basted them a minute ago. So, so they have to, okay, all right. Yeah, and you don't have to film all this. I'm just gonna take basically okay. the, the, take those and put them on the rack. And put them on the, the rack and put them on the okay. back. Sauce them right now. There we go. Yep. Go ahead and give it another little basting of sauce there. Mm, they're about just, 142 internal. Little and bopping sauce. Just, oh yeah. Oh, I can feel the skin kind of starting to mm -hmm. bark up around them. The neighbors look. The neighbors are coming out. They're sniffing. They got the noses up in the air. Mm -hmm. They know what's going on. There yep, we these go. These backwoods may be cooking a little bit quicker. Okay. Uh, come on, baby. Come on. There we go. We'll sauce them and let them back. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, yeah. Y'all look at this. Abe's trying to take some pictures right now, but I mean, this chicken's absolutely gorgeous. Look at the glazes. The sauce is set up. I mean, <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, I'm speechless right here. I mean, we are really ready to roll with this. So he's going to go ahead and take it off, let everything just kind of Sit there and set. cure for a bit, yeah. set, and uh, gosh, we'll, oh my word, and we'll pay more close attention to the ribs here in just a minute, but yeah, the chicken is done, though. Right there. That is a bountiful feast right there. That's a thing of beauty. I mean, you don't just see that. So we're going to take this inside, let that, let that rest for a minute. I don't know if I can wait. Uh-oh, Abe's going to burn himself. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh my God. Uh. <laughs> Hot. Mm. Good stuff, huh? And that's not even glazed. It's so juicy. Mm. 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 That right there. Mm. Oh yeah, good stuff. This Kingman. They are looking beautiful. Hold on, let me go get the. Uh, I don't have my hot glove, so. Okay. Start with the the first rack of. Uh, uh, of ribs here. We're going to turn them upside down. Now, if we were doing this during competition, you pinch I would go all through, that. Yeah, I, I black pinch all this there. little black off. But t today, even though we're kind of showing you how to do uh, some competition ribs, if you were been following us all day, uh, at, at the moment now we're wanting to eat. We're using Jones EQ's products, and so far the chicken we did is off the chain. I mean, I I, I can't even explain it. And right now, Joe has made. His my own rib This rib is his bath, own yeah. rib bath. I watched him make it. Uh, he didn't get it from anybody else. He, he he mixed up a lot of mixtures, and it smells amazing. So I can't wait to try this rib bath. I don't know how much you normally put in there, Joe. Just a little bit. So you know, just gonna, uh, kind, of, kind of make you a boat for something to flow out all over the place the first. Here, so none of this kind of comes out. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, kind of. That's, yeah, that's good right there. Is that all I need? Yeah, that's all you need, really. So I've got my little rib bath going here. I'm going to go ahead and place this over. And then I'm going to run that up. My wife normally does that, so the fact that I'm able to still actually wrap a rib in foil means I'm, uh, I'm okay. <laughs> all right, there we go. We'll put that back on the cooker. You gotta wrap again. Okay, right? so okay. we're taking the ribs off. Taking the ribs off, give them a little wrap. It ribbit, ribbit, rib time. It's ribbit, ribbit, rib time. Okay, okay, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Let's start with this one right here. Let's go ahead and get this one uh, out of the way. And I'm gonna let Basically, we're stuff. unwrapping them. We're gonna put a, put a little sauce on them, let them tack up. Man, that's hot. I'm glad it's burning my hands. Oh, look at the color. Isn't that yummy, beautiful? Yummy, yummy, yummy. So, hold on. I'm going to throw this all aside at the moment. I'll clean it up here in a second. It's that really, is beautiful, really, actually. Really, that, is mm -hmm. really that, cool. that is a gorgeous uh, rib right there. This is honestly, this is honestly a beautiful color, too. Oh, look at it. Yep. Yeah, I think Danny Jones might as well just call it, call it quits oh, now. Are those <laughs> juices? Yeah. Is it tenderness? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so we're gonna get those unwrapped and then we're gonna sauce them, put it back on the grill. What he's doing, he's putting honey money on there and a little bit more glaze. So we're just glazing, tacking up the ribs, getting them ready. 
Put them back on there. Oh, look yeah. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Mm. Man. I really needed some, uh... So now, I'm going to make sure they're still glazed real good. I'm going to dose them one more with honey money. So we got this for a good color and sauce and glaze. Because on both those now, I'm going to go ahead... The honey money rub honey money. right there. Yes. We'll let them tack up for about 10 minutes or so. Yeah, I've got to, uh, I'm about to go ahead and do this one. If y'all want to watch me do one, All right. okay. here's one that, that hasn't been glazed or tacked mm -hmm. up yet. So what okay. I'm going to do right now is you can see how it looks. It's got a beautiful color to it before I even start. And I'm going to go ahead and add this wonderful glaze. Look at that color as I glaze it. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. But see, once I do that, you've got a couple little spots on there that are kind of white. And what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna come back over with that. And that's- So that's gonna, nothing but juices right there. Juices and color right there. Juices mm -hmm. and color. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on there. Now, I gotta get these spares off of here, which I didn't start Oh yeah, okay. spare so, ribs. So, oh, yeah. different variety of ribs. Yeah. That's just juices? So, yeah. <laughs> More juices. Yeah, watch out, Tom. Watch out. Watch out. Uh, to get you. So now we got this one. Oh, yeah. These need the most little rub. I'm going to add it to them because there is. Let's get that right there on the. Okay. Anything white, I'm going to add color to and flavor. Okay. So that's glazed. Beautiful. The color starting to blend in, if you can see it real well. See how that color's starting to come in? Mm -hmm. Now what I'm gonna do, hey, hi, 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 hi. I gotta get some guts to- There you ah! go. There you okay. go. Okay, there we go. So now, you know. that's right. All right, so here. Abe was testing the temperature, but these ribs are ready. Y'all, look They're at ready. that. That's look. beautiful. So let's go ahead and pull them off. So we've been waiting on them. Set them right down there in the pan. Oh, we'll go inside yeah. and just slice them up. Yum, 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 yum. Mm. Look at those right yum, there. Yum, yum, hey, yum. color is just so it awesome. It's amazing. Look at those colors right there. This right here is probably more of So there's all the baby bats you can go in the spare. Baby that yeah. beautiful color. Here comes uh, spares. Some spares. Spare wheels. Spare wheels oh, yeah. too. There we go. Okay, all right, eh? You ready to cut into it? Yo, I, I can't lie. I mean, if you look at the color of this right here, I'm really excited. I mean, yeah. That is a beautiful color. These were seasoned by uh, an award-winning uh, Jonesy Q, who, go ahead and hit off on that. Uh, award-winning Jonesy Q, who's won uh, two years in a row at Memphis in May. And I, I'm so excited to try these, I almost can't stand it. I, but I wanted to show you the top side because look how beautiful that looks. But I normally cut them from the bottom side, so Jonesy I'm going to kind of. barbecue gel. I'm going to flip them over. Jonesy barbecue gel. And right. I'm going to cut in between these, and, and you can kind of see how. It, oops. There. Mm -hmm. Whoa! Look at it. Look at it fly. Look at it fly. Make sure I get right in between there. And then, now, let's place these over here like this. And I just want you to see that wonderful, beautiful color. Oh my goodness, can I get... Yes. Come on, come on, but I need you to eat it on video. I'm gonna eat this one on video. So you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let, me, let me zoom out for me. Zoom out so we can all eat one. Okay. Um, <laughs> here, I want you to get this big, thick one right there. Oh, yes. Come on, get that one right there. Yes. We're all gonna take bites. I'm gonna eat this one. Are we, are we all ready? There we go. All right, let's check. Oh. oh my God. Mm. Look, look, look. That's nice. That is super nice. Perfect bite through. Mm. Oh, that flavor. Mmm. Mmm. -mm. That's nice, y'all. Mmm. Mmm. Look, look it's, the bone's not falling oh out of it. It's perfect bite through. Oh my goodness. It's perfect tenderness. 
Mm. Mm. That, that's really good. Yeah. Hey, this is awesome. I should bite through. Yeah, yeah, right there. Not fall off the bone, just perfect bite. Really yeah. good. That, that's perfect. That's good, that's good. This is some good stuff, y'all. And these are the baby backs. Yeah. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, here's some more. We got plenty. All right, next one cut into a, um, the uh, spare ribs. Yeah. Cutting into the spare ribs. All right. We're on, we got the camera rolling. Once again, look at the color. I mean, that is a perfect mahogany, beautiful color. I, I couldn't have asked for better seasoning and color. I'm gonna flip it over so I can see my way to cut it a little easier. Like, there is the end piece, there is uh, that piece, there is, oh, they're looking more. That's my piece right there, huh? There it is. Okay, look at that, look at that, oh my word. Ooh. Look at these. <laughs> How's it going, Ben? Oh my gosh. Are they great? <laughs> Dude. How does 89 cents a pound work for that? Ooh. These are on sale today for 99 cents a pound. That's the only reason I got them. Jeff's call. He's excited. And they are absolutely <laughs> amazing. Look at these right here. Hold on. Let's uh let's look at your bite mark. Oh my goodness. Right there. A perfect bite. Dude, oh, the, the flavor in these things is unbelievable. Yes. I don't know why I like spare ribs better than my back. Look at that. See the smoke ring? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. Perfect back there. Look at that. That's right. Perfect. That is great. You can't beat that, man. I'm telling tell you what. We nailed it today. We did. We did. We nailed it. Thank you so much, man. Jeff, for coming over. I mean, we, we got the best seasonings. We had, we had tips from <laughs> world class barbecue guys. That's right. Our color's perfect, our, our mm. ribs are perfect tender. We could not have had a better day of grilling perfect. if we would have uh, perfect. done this 15 times over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy. Joe, thank you for having me over. Yeah. Every time I come, I have a great day oh, of yeah. cooking. Yeah, I yeah. mean, just look at that bite through. Uh, this is just, mm. every time, every time it's great. We've had Wagyu steak, great wings, and uh, thank you, Jeffrey Jones, for, for giving us this opportunity. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, We're excited. And uh, we'll definitely be using your season many more times right. because your new stuff's great. Again, like I tell y'all, please, like my videos, sub my channel. God bless y'all. We'll put everything in the description box where you can see you get Jeffrey Jones and stuff. Thanks again, man. We got to dig in here and get some good pictures. Y'all take it easy.